<clears throat> All right, I'm back for the last, the third part. Um, so I finished this part off about uh, daily march, daily leg. So something else to uh, familiarize yourself when we're talking about weather and income acceleration. Uh, you have albedo. Albedo is uh, the reflective power of different objects on the Earth's surface. Um, so, for example, I talked about if there's a volcano and has a lot of ash it puts in the atmosphere, well, that will reflect some of the sun's rays. Well, just like clouds will reflect some of the sun's rays, right? And then at night, uh, as you can see in this example, cloud cover will actually keep it a little warmer because it's uh, like a blanket. It will, you know, that, that heat that's being re-released from the ground that's been absorbed all day, uh, it's being released. Um, so, oh, and uh, another really good example is ice. Um, basically, lighter color things reflect uh, the sun's light, and uh, darker colored things, so if you're walking on the pavement, for example, and it's a sunny day, you know, you could almost uh, fry an egg on that uh, concrete. <clears throat> so, let's see. Oh, that's good for that one. All right. So, we talked about the normal lapse rate, right? It gets colder as you go up. Um, in altitude, um, elevation. Well, sometimes there are temperature inversions, right? This is when, you know, you could have a weather system of smog or fog that traps air so that perhaps you strangely have your cold air and your warm air mixed so that they're in these different layers, right? <clears throat> and this is, doesn't happen a huge amount of time, but enough for it to be part of the understanding of the weather system. Um, and these photos here are of uh, different ways that farmers try to, in areas that get a lot of temperature inversions, they try to break that up, right? Um, they're trying to, uh, let's say you're getting uh, some really cold air in um, underneath a, a level of warm air. Well, you don't want your crops to freeze, and so they'll use different ways to try to break that up and get that warm, uh, warm air one place and cold air another place, all right? <clears throat> so the variations in temperature over the Earth's surface are caused by several controls, all right? Controls. Um, they say several, but um, there are six. Uh, that's just a pet peeve of mine when people use the word several. I always feel like they should mean seven. Um, so what are these? Latitude, right? Latitude, that means moving up and down from the equator, right? Going north and south. As you go further north and south from the equator, on average, it gets cooler, right? Because um, there's more oblique sun's rays. Um, land and water distribution. Well, why does this matter? Well, bodies of water absorb that incoming solar radiation more slowly than land. And uh, this will become much more important as we go uh, later on talking about climates. But what does this mean? Well, in a nutshell, if you're by a large body of water, um, this kind of um, smooths out the averages and the temperatures. Whereas if you live in the center of a continent, um, you tend to have more extremes of cold and heat uh, in the different seasons and even in during the day. Uh, that's one of the reasons why here in Minnesota we have such cold winters. Um, number three, ocean currents. Sure enough, um, ocean currents, uh, you know, they often will bring warm currents to, for example, much of Europe um, that would be much colder otherwise uh, and vice versa. Um, let's see, altitude. Well, in a nutshell, um, I've already said this before, if you're walking up a mountain, um, it's going to be cooler as you go up. And this will change uh, climate patterns and weather in lots of different places. Also, landform barriers. Um, a mountain's another good example of that. Um, what does this mean? Well, you know, if you have a large mountain chain um, and you have prevailing winds going one direction, well, on one side of that mountain chain, you'll probably get a bunch of rain. On the other side, it'll be very dry because... Um, as that weather system uh, moves up that mountain, um, it uh, makes it dump out its moisture. And we'll talk a lot more about that later as well. Um, and six, human activity. And an example of human activity is uh, what's called the urban heat island effect. That is uh, just uh, a fact of how cities are warmer than um, places in the country because, uh, well, we have a lot of uh, surfaces in the city that are um, impermeable, meaning, um, you know, water doesn't really run through it very well, um, you know, it absorbs those sun rays uh, a lot more, things like that. <clears throat> so 
So here's some more examples again of um, some controls. Uh, the Gulf Stream is uh, the one that warms up Europe there. Um, you can read more about that. Altitude. Um, again, landform barriers, as you can see on this mountain. Uh, if you look at the top, there's some snow and ice. If you look at the bottom, it's nice and green. Urban heat island effect. So if you look at this area, um, the city versus the mountains, well, look at how much warmer the city is, right? <clears throat> <coughs> and this is, uh, in general, just to read temperature maps. Um, when you see these uh, isotherms, which are the, the lines of temperature that you've often seen on weather maps, um, if they're close together, you're having a steep temperature gradient, right? Um, in a nutshell, as you move north and south from the equator, it gets cooler, right? Um, and these are different seasons, but even different seasons, this general trend uh, stays the same. <clears throat> so these are some uh, climographs. There are useful ways to look at how temperature and often how precipitation change in different places throughout the year. We'll be using a lot more of these later. <clears throat> so there are five basic elements in the atmosphere that serve in ingredients of weather and climate. Uh, what are they? Well, you know, if you're looking at this picture for an example, you know, you definitely see rain, right? Um, <clears throat> so, what are these? They're solar energy or insulation. They are temperature. They are pressure. We'll talk a lot more about pressure systems later. Uh, wind, precipitation. These are the five basic ingredients. And uh, that is it. So, um, I am going to post some more video lectures. Um, I'm going to see how this turned out on the TV compared to uh, the big screen at the social science lab and see which method is better. All right.